Greetings, everyone. It seems as though we in Maine, people across the nation, and many around the world have been watching a continuous version of Groundhog Day. In this version, the star is not Bill Murray, and it does not occur in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. I wondered how long it would take, apparently not long enough, as our esteemed governor, Paul Richard LePage, is back in the national spotlight for all the wrong reasons. Most people know the truth when they see or hear it, but somehow Governor LePage seems to work extra hard to deny, confuse, and complicate facts to the point where his facts appear to be truths to him and his fictions appear to be facts. The governor refuses to acknowledge that facts are facts, not to be falsified or rearranged. I would expect him to know that when using this tactic, he undermines his own credibility. It seems that in Governor LePage's mind, there are two kinds of facts, those that you look up and those that you make up. That one possesses a conscience does not assure its use. By his deeds, I wonder about Governor LePage's conscience. The best leaders know and understand that there is a very thin line between fear-mongering, race-baiting, racial profiling, and hatred. When any two of these are meshed together, we risk development of an enormous powder keg that presents a great danger to all of our citizens. We cease to be one community and become instead a collection of hate-filled interest groups, pitting communities against communities, regions against regions, races against races, and individuals against individuals. There is no denying, however, that Maine is in the midst of a drug epidemic. On that, we can all agree. It is also important to understand, especially for our governor, that our decades-long war on drugs has produced profoundly unequal outcomes across racial groups manifest through racial discrimination and disproportionate drug war misery suffered by communities of color. Although research has shown that the rates of drug use and drug dealing are comparable across racial lines, people of color are far more likely to be stopped, searched, arrested, prosecuted, convicted, and incarcerated for drug law violations than whites. These facts do not cease to exist simply because we choose to ignore them. Now, it is promising that some in Congress and the U.S. Department of Justice are now willing to look at overhauling our criminal justice system. I am certain that they would be interested in taking a look at Governor LePage's novel Three Ring Binder. Governor LePage must make an honest effort to escape his current time warp. Racially charged rhetoric, whether intended or not, has no place in our national, state, or local attempts to resolve the current drug crisis. For an elected governor to even suggest a course of violence, having a duel with anyone, least of all a duly elected state official, is irresponsible and completely unacceptable in today's society. This is not 1825, Governor. Each generation leaves a legacy to succeeding generations. That legacy may be solid and etched in stone, or it may be as fragile as a house of cards tumbling in the first gust of wind. There are children across the state of Maine any one of whom may someday be governor, who looks to our elected officials as role models. A legacy of bullying, arrogance, hatefulness, revenge, and violence is surely one none of us would want them to follow. We know all too well the price of violence. 
for it is a cost that affects the living and the dead. There is no winner. The dead are gone forever and will never return. Now, because of his long and well-established track record of repeated acts of instability, Governor LePage has put himself front and center as the poster boy for background checks. Words have meaning and incendiary words can cost lives. He is a prime example of someone who should never be anywhere near a weapon. So my advice to you, Governor, shared, shed your intolerance of others, stop the bullying and fear mongering, and reject the temptations of racial and ethnic profiling. Realize that self-praise is no credible recommendation. If you continue down this self-destructive path, you will remain unaware of the common good and the need to focus on Maine's drug crisis. Focus instead on ensuring that law enforcement has the resources it needs to combat drug interdiction. That early drug and addiction education is available for our children. And quality funded treatment services are available for those who are already entangled in the addiction trap. Like it or not, Governor, we live in a diverse society and that is not going to change anytime soon. It would be helpful to you during your final two years in office if you looked at diversity as a thought process. I tend to think of it as a self-awareness, an awareness that encompasses those human qualities that are different from my own and those of the groups to which I belong. It encompasses a need to understand one's own culture identities, prejudices, and stereotypes, while at the same time resolving to have the courage and willingness to challenge and change those practices that present barriers for other individuals and other groups. It means acknowledging people's differences and recognizing that those differences are valuable. Understandably, most of us tend to believe in the golden rule of treating others as we would like to be treated. This concept assumes that how one person would like to be treated is the same as how the next person would like to be treated. We may share similar values, but it is how we show those values through our behavior that is important. In this respect, we must be able to move our personal frame of reference to a more sensitive perspective. As citizens, we expect our government, and especially our governor, to maintain order, security, and civility. In actualizing those expectations, we anticipate that all of our citizens will be treated fairly. Then, and only then, will we be able to say, Maine the way life should be.